All right, we got the uh, Excel Catfish Pro 2172 with the Yamaha VMAX Show 175 with a stainless steel prop and all that good stuff. Kind of give the, uh, the review of what I got of it so far. Um, <clears throat> had it for about two weeks. Gone through a couple hours of the break-in period. Uh, and we're going to see kind of what the pros and cons that I found so far. Kind of the plus and minuses uh, since I've had this thing. It's in the uh, Optifade Timber camouflage. And uh, <clears throat> I guess we'll just start at the front and work our way back. It's on a easy track trailer, tandem axle with the aluminum wheel upgrade. Uh, all the lights work. I really like the cables here at the front uh, to uh, safety cables. They uh, they kind of stay up and out of the way if they're not hooked up. That's nice. Instead of dragging on the ground like the chains used to. I uh, got the spare wheel. And the trailer overall is really well built. Looks like the, the side rails here are, are adjustable. Uh, with the little pins right here that you can see. Now, one thing I was kind of curious about, the uh, the boards on the bump rails are, or on the side rails are like bent inwards. Not sure if that was by design or, or intention, or, you know, not intentional, just a bad piece of wood. But uh, both sides really do that. And uh, it may cause for the, the carpet to be wore out a little quicker than normal on that one. Uh, <clears throat> but not really that big of a deal. So on the front here, on the boat itself, went ahead and got the uh, Excel lights fixture, got it painted to match instead of the, the black. The uh, dealer told me it was like a $200 option or something like that, I think, if I remember correctly. It rotates 360 degrees, uh, can adjust up and down. Can you, you can adjust both lights individually. Uh, not overly bright, but they're okay. They're, they're sufficient. Um, going duck hunting in the morning, I'm probably going to add a couple more lights somewhere. Like either attach them to the rail or something to, to get a little more light out there. But uh, they, they, they do good enough as is for the most part. We have a spot for the spud poles right there. They work pretty nice. Uh, of course, you have your navigation light plug-in right there. Up here on the console area in the front of the boat, we got uh, a couple switches for your nav lights, and then of course your trim up and down for your main motor. Plug-in for your lights, and then right here a plug-in for your trolling motor whenever you install it. <clears throat> uh, this piece is made out of aluminum. It's pretty nice. Uh, just not very pretty though. Uh, this particular piece, uh, it's, you know, it's got a little, little nick right here on, on both sides, and it's just not well, not form-fitted very well to this part of the boat. Uh, could have been cleaned up a little bit, but uh, it's more cosmetic more than anything. Uh, for the most part, though, it does look pretty good. Just, uh, just some minor, you know, cosmetic work that probably could have done a, been done a little bit better, but... Uh, Overall, nice. Uh, have the uh, accessory tracked all the way down. Um, right here, you have the little opening so you can actually slide bolts in. Now, this particular model, for some odd reason, I don't know if I had to ask for them or, and just didn't or what, but it did not come with any cleats on top of the uh, rail heel, rear here. So uh, I just went to Walmart, got me some of these polycarbonate ones and about 50 cents in bolts and bolted it into the track here it's good and snug so that's definitely an extra uh, you may want to if you ever get this boat you may want to ask and see if they can weld some on that would probably be better you know to have some welded like right up here or, or right here or something instead of having it having to put on the boat extra after the fact I uh, got three seat pedals here, nice and black. Uh, don't know how long they're going to stay like that, but uh, they do look good right now. Um, have front storage up here. 
Uh, before I open the storage up, I will say that uh, this is probably a little bit of a quality control issue, but uh, you can kind of see that this uh, it's not really laid in there just perfect. A uh, little bit of a more of a gap down here than it is over there. Uh, and then right here, as you can tell, it's nice and pretty level right here, right? And then as you move down the boat, you can see that you have quite the lip right back here. And it's just on this one corner. The other corners are, are decently level with the rest of the boat. Now, uh, so that's something that, you know, you may just want to reaffirm if you ever get a boat like this is, hey, I want to make sure all the lids and stuff are, are nice and level because this one is definitely, definitely not. But it's close enough to, to not make too big of a fuss. Um, opens and closes real well. I like that it opens back towards the boat instead of the front of the boat. Um, me personally, I probably should have said something about these uh, these locks and handles. Um, being on a camouflage boat, you don't really want a whole lot of chrome. At least I don't. Uh, I would have preferred the black handles with the black uh, inserts instead of the black inserts with the chrome handles that were given but they do lock and that's good um, this actual lid is reinforced that's pretty nice uh, that way it doesn't like bow in or anything whenever you uh, uh, whenever you step on it so it kind of gives it some reinforcement welds look really good too um, storage in here is pretty nice there's a hole right back there to, to look at the uh, uh, the gas tank there. I suppose you could see if you're full or not by looking in here. Uh, good stores though. You can put a lot of stuff in here, a lot of life jackets, weights, things like that. Uh, and it actually goes all the way up to right there. And I believe you could probably, maybe, well it's riveted in, but you could that wasn't riveted in you could probably take that out and get a little more space but uh looks really good in there <clears throat> Let me close this back up and uh yeah so this as you can tell this this right here does not does not mess around when you step on it or anything and over here since i got the lights on the front they gave me a, or put a trolling motor bracket on here for me. It's a, uh, it's pretty, it's very solid as well. Um, they did try to hide something from me. Not real sure about that. Looks like they tried to, they drilled a hole or something and then tried to patch it. I'm not quite sure why, but whatever. Uh, may bring that up to dealerships if they'll send me another one and just replace it. Um, and then, uh, for the most part, this is nice and flush, uh, you know, except for right here. I think that's just more of a, a little bit of a fit issue, but uh, not that big of a deal. Right, right here, I don't think it will be anyway. Um, but that's where the trolling motor will mount, because normally the trolling motor on these will mount right through here. But since I got the lights, it, you know, had to be mounted over here. Now, uh, one thing you'll notice is there's absolutely nowhere, like on the other side, to put your bolts in here. So, to me, that's not really that big of a deal. It's just kind of a, hey, if you're going to cover up the, the spot, you know, up here with this, you probably ought to put one right there. Uh, close by so you can get something in here, but that's, I can do that pretty easily. Um... Be able to get a you know a, a cleat or something put in there if necessary but i uh, probably won't end up putting anything there and then this is one thing that just really 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 not very happy with this but i mean we'll see what we can do with it right now it's really close to where the end of this trolling motor bracket and so if you install a trolling motor bracket there you're going to have one hell of a time trying to get a trolling motor going to the stow position there depending on length and then if you do have it you may have to take it out of stow position just to put gas in the thing 
but uh, we'll see what we can come up with to try and make, hopefully make that a little smaller because this thing is massive. It's a lot bigger, it's probably twice the size of the ones that uh, come on your F4 XLs, you know, your duck boat, duck boat models, things like that. Uh, but it is aluminum instead of, uh, instead of that uh, plastic stuff that the smaller ones are in. Kind of think that, uh, you know, probably ought to be able to cut, you know, probably about this much of this off and then cut because that hose comes in like this on here. You should, I would think you'd be able to cut about this much of that hose off and drop this down to about here where it was kind of even with the lid of the boat. But uh, we'll see some, if we can't do something about that. That's major concern of mine at least if you have the lights on front with the trolling motor bracket on the side like mine uh got a comes with a, a coleman cooler you know 20 dollars special at walmart uh i've used it a few times during duck season pretty nice little cooler to put stuff in uh, we have the control or an access panel right here where you can get in there where the gas tank is and and a couple other things and uh and you can just kind of get in there and, and mess around. Uh, we have two little kind of steps right here on the side. Those are pretty nice. Um, have a nice place to eat. I would really think that you could maybe put something over there on that ledge. That would be pretty nice so you can kind of set stuff there. Um, here we have a gun box, rod box uh, with two spud poles. Uh, I have a little extra stuff in there. Um, real nice. I like it a lot. Uh, got four holes up there to put rods in. I think you can hold up to eight foot rods, I believe, something like that in here comfortably. Um, the only knock I really have on this, well, I have two two things that I kind of have a uh, slight issue with on this particular rod box. Um, this right here, the as you can tell, this goes in quite a bit, right? You know, it's like... Uh, all the way up to my knuckles. So you're looking at that much space when you could have probably cut that in half and actually had this opening be a little bit wider. That would have been really, really nice to have it that opening come all the way out to say here instead of here. Because sometimes it gets really crowded trying to put stuff in this rod box if it's if it's got any width to it at all. Um, so I would I would definitely say this is more of a rod box instead of a gun box, but you can fit a couple in here, so that's good. Um, another thing that I'll say on, on this rod box that's kind of a deterrent for me, which I'm just not a big fan of, is is when you sit here and you look at this box and say you sit on it or something like that, you can tell that this moves a lot. It doesn't seal very good. Uh, now the reason why I believe is because of this weld right here it kind of keeps the whole lid up um, so the, the the actual lid itself probably should have ended about right here instead of you know all the way over here um, so that's kind of keeping that box you know <clears throat> open a tad so it's got some play in it uh, kind of I would imagine this may cause a little extra wear and tear uh, there, a uh, little probably sooner rather than later. Um, of course, I got went ahead and added another uh, cleat back here. Here's another spot that you can uh, add in your accessories without having to cut bolts or anything like that. I use the one quarter inch by one inch or one quarter inch by inch and a half uh, bolts to uh, to put on accessories in this. Uh, this back part of the boat looks really good. It looks like it's welded nice. Uh, um, got my spud pole spot right there that I can drop the poles in if I need to. Uh, got little filters on the, on the intakes here, which is really nice. Um, <clears throat> See here, of course, got the boat motor painted to match the boat. Um, not really sure why they didn't leave the or have the Yamaha stickers put back on it, but uh, uh, 
think that would look really good if you put if you had the black Yamaha stickers on it and whatnot. But uh, I may bug the dealership see if I can get some of those to put on it just to you know verify what it is. Um, so you got the hydraulic jack plate, really nice, really nice. Uh, now here is the storage compartment for your batteries, your battery charger, different things like that. Got a lot of room in here. Really, really, really nice. Really like this. Um, came with three uh, 27D, I believe is the size that these battery holders will hold. Uh, very nice. And of course it goes over here and then you have your pumps now I have three pumps back here uh, because I have two in the main live well that I'll show you here in a second, and uh, quite a bit of ca bunch of cables and whatnot in here. Really, really, uh, really nice compartment, and it will keep everything dry if uh, if it rains to the, for the most extent, uh, most uh, mostly. Um, now, let's see here. this this particular one does not have a lock it just has a regular old lift uh, see and, and this lid is actually uh for the most part pretty level uh has a slight lift there uh nice and level there and a s s slight lift there real real nice um not, not sure what that hole is that hole right there not really sure what that goes to uh not sure if that. Huh. I'm not sure what that is. Maybe that's a bilge pump or something. I don't know. I'll have to look at it. It's hooked to some type of hose right there. Uh -huh. Got the hydraulic steering uh, right over there as well. Got the uh, all around light for your navigation lights there. Got that plug in. One thing I do really like. Uh, a lot of boats are doing this now. They have the extra piece uh, right here that you can mount your troll or your your transducer to, and so you don't have to drill into the boat. You just drill into that little piece. Um, so there, you got your drain hole, and of course you have uh, that plug in right there. Uh, not really sure where that one goes. I want to say that is the discharge for the live the big live well. Uh, and of course the other hole is the, is the, uh, drain for the, uh, main boat itself. So here's the back deck area. Um, now this right here, this is your 66 gallon live well. Really, really, really nice. Um, let me get in here and get it open. Now, one thing, if you will notice right now, these, this is not really a good lid on here. It's not, it's kind of warped, I guess. It's, it's not, something's up with it. Uh, does not, one side is solid. It's nice and flat, you know. This side over here, definitely, definitely not. But, uh, now keep in mind, this boat is only, Two weeks old right now okay so this is the uh the live well uh right here go ahead and let that sit so we got the 66 gallon live well have a separator uh right here have dual aerators very 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 nice uh i figured since it was 60 uh 66 gallons two dual aerators would help fill it up pretty quick have kind of an overflow there with a with a uh, filter on it, and then of course have uh, like your main drain hole right there. So that's pretty nice. Not really sure how this pine straw got in here, but I am in South Arkansas, so uh, there's pine straw everywhere right now. And uh, the lid, of course, is reinforced. That is very nice. Uh, so you can actually step on this walk across it and it shouldn't you know flex a whole lot uh, 
right there. So for all in all, uh, this particular, oh, and of course uh, this, the live well actually locks, which is pretty cool. Don't want anybody stealing your fish. Uh, now, so other, so live well is really, really nice other than the fact that this lid is came to me out of the factory from the dealership with kind of warped. I think you can kind of hear that where it just kind of, you know, where it goes up and down when you step on it. So, uh, but other than that, yeah, it's, it's really, really nice. Um, <clears throat> now, go ahead and step down here into the kind of the cockpit area. Instead of having the bench seat, I went ahead and got two captain's chairs because I want to be able to walk in between my seats, step up here and get up onto the back deck. Um, these seats are super, super, super comfortable. I really, really, really like these seats and I don't have the, I don't have the seats that came with it for the front and the back, you know, pedestal seats, but they are just as comfortable, if not more. Uh, these seats are really nice, really comfy. Now, this is the uh, storage box. I went ahead and got the storage box in there. Instead of having two smaller storage box, one under each seat, I went ahead and got, uh, went ahead and put uh, one big large storage box. I really use this as my gun box instead of my rod box. Just because the opening to this thing is so much bigger. A lot easier to get stuff in and out. Uh, go ahead and close these down a little bit. So open this. So you can see that uh, a lot more open here, nice and deep. You can put a lot of stuff in here. I keep my life jacket in here. Usually my guns, things like that. Uh, one thing you'll notice about this though, in this lid, there is no reinforcement whatsoever behind this lid, okay? And it is, it is very apparent that there's not. Uh, which is kind of a kind of a negative for me uh, You can kind of I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, when you step there It definitely gives and you can see the hinges will kind of flex with it as well uh, <clears throat> So that's to me. I'm kind of worried about that that will definitely uh, Probably cause some some issues as far as uh you know durability when it comes to this thing uh I may actually try to see if they can't fix that um <clears throat> now so here in the console it's a really nice console uh, i actually thought about getting a hot foot for this but i uh, decided against it um they have this little seat or foot rest here it's pretty nice but uh very flimsy it's only held in by two uh sheet metal screws here from what i can tell probably needs another like screw behind it or something like that something to kind of tighten that up a little bit because it's a little flexible there looks like they also tried to fix a fix another hole there just cover it up so you know but uh, yeah, kind of a quality control issue, but whatever. Uh, <clears throat> got a nice cup holder here. Uh, you could probably use that as to access all this stuff down in here. Uh, if, you know, if you ever need to run wires or things like that, I would imagine that's where they ran. Uh, got a nice setup here. And if you'll notice, you sit when you're in this boat, you actually sit really, really high in the boat. I gotta get used to that. I uh, had a War Eagle before this, uh, Black Hawk, and kind of sat down in the boat. So this is a little different. I do like it though, because you can see, you can see everything around you, in front of you, a lot better than you can when you're sitting down in a boat. So if you're just kind of putt putting along, you can kind of see right up over the bow. Really nice, I do, I do kind of like it. It's growing on me. Um, <clears throat> now here on the console, we got the accessory here. This kind of turns on your lights, right? And uh, that's really all that that one does. You have mile per hour, RPM, fuel gauges. Now I don't have a trim gauge. I was kind of used to having one of those. Not really sure if I had to ask for one or uh, 
or what. Um, and you can see this thing's kind of, there you go. But, uh, anyway, yeah, that gauge is a little, little off. Uh, <clears throat> got your nav lights up here, bilge, uh, aerator, horn, and then this here is your, uh, your tilt trim, or your, uh, not your tilt trim, sorry, your, uh, your jack plate. Now, uh, this is one thing, uh, that this is kind of, this is a, this is going to be a knock, uh, for Excel. I'm going to need Excel to go ahead and spend the extra eight, nine, ten bucks and put another switch for the aerators, okay? Because right now, the way I got this boat from the dealership, which I, I'm assuming it was Excel that wired all this up, they put all three of these aerators, the two in the 66 gallon live well and the one in this front live well, all on one switch. Which, you know, just really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I, I would love to have the capability to say, hey, I just want to turn on my front live well. Or, hey, I just want to turn on my back live well. I don't want to have to fill up both of them at the same time, you know. So, uh, that's something that I actually uh, told the dealership. I said, hey, I'm going to need that fixed before, you know, uh, I agree to, to pay for this thing. So, there, the, I believe the... Uh, the dealership who I work with is, uh, they're really good, really good people. Um, they are going to add me a switch here and put the console air or the console live well on this aerator switch and then put the two back ones on the bottom aerator switch. Um, so yeah, but on that, if you get one of these boats, make sure you tell them to put the aerators on different switches. Um, of course, you got your horn, I think the horn works. <laughs> Yep, it works. Uh, another thing is um, on this uh, jack plate uh, switch here, they didn't put a boot on it. It's kind of a kind of a cosmetic problem here that I kind of have with it. So I went ahead and got I haven't put it on yet, but I uh, got the dealership to give me a boot to go on this. You know, to make it black, make it kind of match the rest of my switches here. Because right now it just kind of looks odd with uh, with that little silver switch there. Now here, I've never had a boat with this type of stuff, but this is pretty cool. I do love this. Uh, I got a cigarette lighter, you know, to plug in. Uh, I guess you could plug in your, um, <clears throat> plug in a spotlight, something like that if you wanted to. That'd be nice. Uh, and then, of course, here I have a dual USB port which is pretty cool you should be able to charge your phone you know just by doing anything with that thing uh, you know plug in any type of USB stuff that you need so that is definitely a plus didn't even know that was coming with the boat uh, so that was kind of an extra that I really enjoyed uh, I do like that so that is great um, see what else we got here now uh, this boat uh, Went ahead and got the grate. Uh, the grate does come out. Uh, it's pretty nice. Uh, so I can clean stuff out if I need to. If I drop something in there, I can just take the grate out and pick it up. Uh, one thing I forgot to add about this, um, I had a special request. I went ahead and had them ask for a drain to be put in this one. Because I kind of wanted to be able to use this as like an ice chest or, or something like that to put this in. Now I was really hoping... Uh, for them not to just cut a hole in it and put a uh, a grate over it, I, I thought I explained that that they needed to put. Uh, uh, I want them to run PVC pipe or a hose or something from there and connect it to the other drainage uh, for the live wells. That way, I could put a boat plug or something in it and keep it keep it full. Uh, but and it didn't happen, so. It's whatever, I can figure something out. Now here's the, uh, I believe this is a 10 gallon live well here in the front. Pretty nice. Uh, needs to be cleaned out a little bit. Hadn't really used this yet. Uh, has a nice little uh, 
seal and everything around here that uh, that goes with it. Uh, and of course the boat plug has the uh, aerator in there, of course. And then of course it has uh, a filtered uh, drain or overflow, which is nice. And that is pretty much the conclusion of everything that I see on this boat. Although I do have one more thing that I need to fix. I went ahead and had Excel send me some more, uh, some more uh, lettering because these things are falling off every road trip. But uh, other than that, overall, great boat. Really like it. And uh, probably buy one again.